Chapter 13, The Mission Unfolds. Pam's conversations challenged Rory. He could not deny what he felt while sitting with her. Even in spite of the pain, there was some clarity and strength. He decided to try on the concept to seem to offer that seemed to offer some tools. The sense of warmth and good that washed over her was the first. He found himself listening to people differently. He looked into their eyes. He heard them. He waited for indications of joy or passion to emerge so he could encourage and nurture it. And at the back of his mind was the question, is love of life, love of self, love of others our motivation? Many worked to meet bills and felt burdened. Some felt the intense heaviness of surviving, which left no room for feelings, period. Others were caught up in causes fueled by blame, judgment, or fear. Others were busy clawing up some corporate ladder or looking for someone to fix them. Whether he looked at people in his life, in his practice, on television, or in newspaper articles, there seemed to be little evidence that joy, love, and trust were their foundations. He saw some who at times seemed to radiate warmth and lightness. But that came and went. It did not seem to be constant. He was especially aware of his feelings. He knew that he was busy, tired, frustrated, and sometimes satisfied. There was never a time during the next two days that he could consistently identify with what Pam had described. Now he was sitting again with her to hear more of her story. For a few days after my experience, I watched myself and others. Some of the craziness began to make sense. I could see the possibility that if humans were in a crippled inner state, they would act in the ways that I saw around me, Pam began. I tried to will myself back, to feel the brush strokes of love, but it did not happen. I wandered to the park, sat under the oak, and nothing happened. Then the third morning I woke and just felt that today I could hear more. I remember thinking, Shadow, please help me to know what to do. This time Shadow told me to find the group of willow trees. They were on the far side of the park, closer to the baseball field. I took my bundle of possessions and hurried over to that area. I sat down and thought, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to know more. Then I remembered the law of this planet that my request was the key. What do I want to know? I asked myself. So I started with questions. Is it possible for the individual circuitry to be corrected? Yes, came the answer from Shadow. Is the circuitry incorrect at birth? Yes, there are major disconnects and overlays within every human vehicle because the blueprint was re-engineered to create domination. The energy field of and beyond the body is further impacted by imbalanced imprints manifesting from stored experiences within families and cultures. Also, Individual experiences carried over from other lifetimes are in the unseen life flow. These imprints will show up as problems, diseases, violence, and in other ways, even in a baby. Increasingly, as the child matures, the imprint manifests become more apparent and evident. Most problem patterns that seem to begin later, say at the age of 18 or even 30, are actually in the field all along. Is it possible to have those system and circuitry shortages corrected or must an individual deal with the crippled bodysuit through life? It is cri critical that corrections and reconnections be made, Shadow insisted. Do we n humans know how to correct the circuitry, I ask? <laughs> no. In fact, most are no longer aware of the problem. Some information is known, but not enough in, in humankind to address the crippling and restore the original circuitry. There is still much more than the original DNA and wiring to be explained 
when someone is asking for the information where shadows reply, then, then how can we do it? Begin with what you know, and when you need more information, ask us. Don't stop asking questions. Remember your assignment with shadows advice. And then I ask, if we get the bodysuit corrected, will Earth's problems end? <laughs> I guess shadow has a sense of humor because I heard a faint chuckle. Well, we all wish it were that easy, but unfortunately the problems have been around a very long time and the effects from them have crystallized through many earth systems. But correcting the circuitry is a critical piece, especially when the knowledge of original agenda and purpose for this planet is added. What's his answer? Peace, you mean there's more? Oh yes, Shadow's words came in with certainty. Tell me about it. I, I need to know as much as I can about what we're dealing with. I heard Shadow's chuckle. Sounds like the Dana I know. That's when the next vision opened in my, my mind, when the images began. I lay down under the willows and pulled my bundle to pillow my head. I worried for a minute that I would be asked by the police to move on, but that thought vanished and I watched the story unfold. I recognized myself. I was floating above a home. It looked a very, very long ago. The woman was pregnant. And somehow I knew I was the intended baby. She was to be my mother. She was young, alone in the single-roomed home. The conditions were very meager, but it was immaculate, and she seemed so happy about carrying me. I could hear her singing and talking to me. Being near her, I felt loved and peaceful. Then I was in another place. I had a feeling it was a spiritual home. I was discussing plans for my birth, what I was to remember, others in physical bodies from this home with whom I was to connect for this mission, how, how I would recognize them, and more. I knew I would be gone a long time. I was told that there would be difficulties, and yet I was in an environment of such love, empowerment, and joy. I couldn't put it into our words. I understood and accepted that this mission to the earth would be hard, but in that space of love, there was no way I could understand the difficulty. Pam looked to Rory, questioning her ability to explain and his ability to understand. He nodded and seemed to comprehend. I guess this was a final re review before my birth onto the earth planet because then I began to feel drawn back to the home of the young mother. This time, as I moved toward Earth, I sensed a great light. I was not alone. Amazing love from my real home filled my heart. It was very much like the time I felt washed over like the watercolor canvas. As I moved toward the physical sphere, I sensed what appeared to be a dense cloud. Several others, friends, were focusing in around me as I moved. Although my friends were there, the denseness began to cut off my sense of their presence. Pam was aware that it, she did not want to mention Jerry, Jera, Jera, her most profound love and holder of the vision. Where was he and how could she ever find him? The memory of him was her connection, her thread to love, the spirit, and yet at times that memory engendered her, engendered her greatest pain. She stopped her mind wandering and brought her focus back to Rory. I can't tell you the panic I felt as an unseen force drew me through the dark, heavy space, the shock from Earth's density and the pain of physical birthing into the body. As I relived this earth birth experience, I could understand why I have been angry at what I call God. Even though all the help from the lighter vibrational re realms was available, that dense cloud of negative energy around and on the earth made me feel cut off from them. I eventually made up stories 
I have been abandoned on a dead planet. Something is wrong with me. Just survive and never come back here. I know others have had similar feelings. Some of the people on the streets talk of being angry, lost, and helpless. I felt like something strong and powerfully powerful had put me into situations from which I could not escape. And so what had you learned by the time you were in the vision of your birth, where I asked? Well, several things, like the sense of love and caring that flowed through me. I had to ask and find answers for myself. I am not alone, Pam replied. I wanted more. My conversations with Shadow continued over the next four years. Eventually, I was shown the beginning of this distorted energy we call fear. I learned that we, as one family group, wanted to experience chaos frequencies. We created and inserted a chip into our flow from some from source that would cause distorted frequencies. When we were ready, we reconfigured our numerical formula with numbers that would occasionally out allow that chip to vibrate. Whenever the numbers lined up, spontaneous chaos frequencies shifted us from stable to non-stable. We introduced the chip with the intention that we would shortly end the experiment. Instead, we got stuck. Now we call the stable and non-stable frequencies love and fear. We accept them as necessary and our nature. Not tr true, by the way. It was our vulnerability during the periods of instability that allowed great parasitic invasions. So I understood that after establishing a way to access resources, the original Earth Force's purpose was to identify anything that would diminish life or limit our abilities. The ancient ones were to stay in resonance with their divine nature of love, joy, self-valuing, curiosity. Those are the natural expressions of the galactic families and of our divine home. From that place, we were to rid all energy of outsiders and any expressions of their parasitic agendas. I learned that those who first came to the planet were well prepared. The original design for the earth bodysuit worked well. As the first assignment for the ancient ones on mission, was for those in male suits to hold space, anchor energy from home, and support the females in exploring the planet. Those in male body suits retained constant contact with the teams in the unseen worlds that we would call spirit. Holding space, sitting in quiet, anchoring the energy of the sun was their initial task. Those souls were in the bod male body and they were known by the outsider's forces. On the outsider's monitoring devices, it appeared as if the males were alone and doing nothing. It had been planned that way, a distraction from the work of the female. Working with the energy of Gaia, females were to anchor to the earth, discovering how this 
planet and the laws function, determine suitable places to settle, and develop food sources. Those in female suits had greater access to Mother Earth because they were unseen on the parasitic monitoring devices. In this intentional invisibility, females could design, create, and choose agendas for the mission force to thrive. There were no plans for birthing to bring more volunteers at that point. The number of ancient ones remained limited and consistent. So everything was going well. Everything began to change shortly after the activation of female's primary mission, the assignment to discern and remove the constricting outsider parasitic presence. After the female and her presence was discovered, the circuitry of every bodysuit, physical bodysuit, was crippled. The intended communication systems were overlaid with outsider mechanisms, and eventually our divine planned body's blueprint design was replaced with entrapping system of the parasitic worlds. Some think that Earth is a planet for learning lessons. What I was taught is that if there are lessons to be learned on Earth, it is that we are amazing, intelligent, loving beings. And anything that diminishes our experience of ourselves as such does not belong here. I also learned that all of the crippling must be transformed. All of our reasons for limit must be dissolved and that we are the ones to choose a new life and a new world. Just as important, I knew that humanity, the mission volunteers are not here alone. We did not intend to walk this journey using only information physically discerned or abilities, abilities socially taught. There is immense help available in the unseen worlds. There are massive mission force collaboratives in place to help Earth and her inhabitants to correct and transform all that has held them stuck. We are all on this mission together. Those in unseen bodies and worlds must have our help and we cannot accomplish the goal of sovereignty without them. The value of the physical manifestations come as imbalance, limits, or disease is that they will cause pain. The message in pain is that imprints, old patterns, parasitic constructs are in our energy fields and do not reflect our truth. The voice of those in physical bodies have the authority to name such manifestations as not acceptable here then those on the earth and in spiritual regions committed to restoring earth and her inhabitants to the light of wholeness that we call love can take action. 